Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Green Elves, updated with March of the Machine The Aftermath, which introduces four copies of Nissa Resurgent Animist to the archetype. And this card's great, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three Legendary Elf with a Landfall, saying whenever a land enters, we get to add one mana of any color to our mana pool, so very similar to a Lotus Cobra which rotated out of Standard a while ago. And then if this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an Elf card or Elemental and put it into your hand. So Nissa can also provide a bit of card advantage if we combine it with ramp spells, such as uh, turn 4 Invasion of Zendikar perhaps, get to search up two lands, enable landfall twice, and then get to search up an elf or elemental, only elves in this particular build. And then the invasion can also be transformed pretty easily if we hit it for three, and then make an awakened skyclave a 4-4 elemental with vigilance and haste, also counts as a land that can tap for one man of any color. And then our eventual goal is to win the game with Nissa Ascended Animist. This is a Planeswalker that we typically want to cast for 7 mana, although we do have the flexibility of casting it for 5 mana or 6 mana and some life, although then it will enter the battlefield with fewer loyalty counters on it. The plus 1 can make large Phyrexian horror tokens, the minus 1 can destroy artifacts or enchantments, and the minus 7 is what we're most interested in, since we can use it right away if we play a 7 mana Nissa, saying until end of turn, creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1 for each forest we control and gain a trample. And our mana base has 23 forest plus 1 Boseju, so we can often just kill the opponent on the spot with a minus 7 from Nissa, even if we only have 2 or 3 creatures in play. But a great combo with Nissa is Awaken the Woods, which also works very nicely with the 3 mana legendary creature, as we get to create X11 green forest dried land creature tokens. So these are tokens, they still count as creatures, and they still count as lands. So when they enter the battlefield, they will enable a landfall for for the Resurgent Animist, and they also contribute towards the Ascended Animist's minus 7 ability, as they all count as forests. So ramping in soon Awaken the Woods and then sending up a Nissan the following turn is usually game over. And then another great payoff for the Elf tribe is the Leaf Crown Visionary, 2 mana 1 1, giving other elves we control plus 1 plus 1. And whenever we cast an Elf spell, even if it gets countered, we can pay a green mana, and if we do, draw a card. So that can help us find some of our key cards, such as our Ascended Animist, to end the game. And then we've got some early acceleration with the Stalwart, can tap another untapped artifact or creature we control to add one mana of any color, can even potentially tap some of our treasure tokens from Gala Greeters to add mana. There's the Cultivator, which can tap to put an oil counter on itself, and then can tap remove an oil counter to untap target lands, so every other turn the Cultivator can make one mana. And then at two mana we mentioned Gala Greeters, also excellent in a deck playing the Awaken the Woods, as we can make several tokens in one turn, so we can max out on the Gala Greeter's ability, usually making a treasure token first, then we can get a plus one counter or gain two life. And then there's the Loam Speaker, which can just tap for one mana of any color, can also tap to transform a land into a 3-3 creature until end of turn, also very useful in potentially transforming our Invasion of Zendikar, which only requires three damage to transform it. And then uh, we've covered the entirety of the deck. One Boseju just as a bit of interaction, which is something our deck certainly lacks. So that's what's going to keep it from being a very competitive deck on the ranked ladder. If we ever face uh, Rakdos midrange, currently the most popular deck, especially in best of three, the combination of cheap spot removal to disrupt our early elves, and then the combination of Harvester with a transformed reflection of Kiki Jiki to just kill our creatures turn after turn is something our deck can't really handle. The only way we possibly win that matchup is is an Awaken the Woods making a bunch of tokens, and then playing a Nissan to end the game on the spot, but that's not a very reliable game plan. So again, don't expect this to be very competitive, but should be a lot of fun to try out in the play queue today. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Couple one drops for additional ramp. And I should start with the Stalwart, so next turn I can go Greeters, use the Stalwart, play Cultivator, enable Greeters. And I think I prefer Cultivator over another Stalwart. Make a treasure. And avoid wings our opponents, a proliferate deck. So we could already play an invasion of Zendikar. 
but the alternative is greeters plus stalwart make two treasures. Yeah, both are reasonable. I guess we'll go with the invasion while we can. Even though it does use up a treasure, whereas greeters into stalwart does not. Okay, and then we'll pass it back, can charge up our cultivator. And then now we've got a bigger board presence to immediately transform the invasion of Zendikar. Hybrid attacks. Is there a sweeper in our future? I hope not. Okay, another Gala greeters. So, let's say we... Play greeters first, see if there's a counter spell, and then I can still invasion afterwards. That resolved. And then we can invasion of Zendikar. This makes a mana, and this can make mana. Alright, opponent did have a reject imperfection after all. Well, we can still hope to resolve our Nissa here. We've got a mana for it. Another Void Wing. The only issue with Nissa is that uh, minus seven is not going to be very effective with only two forests. There's a third. So let's make as much mana as possible here. Six, and this will make it seven. Can even pay for a make disappear for what it's worth. And then we can just plus to trigger all the Gala Greeters. So this one gets a plus one counter so it can attack. And the rest maybe gets counters as well at this stage. We have all the mana we need. And life is not going to help against poison damage. Alright. We get in for 3. And then next turn a minus 7 could be feasible. Opponent answers our token. I guess the Void Wings can always pressure Nissa to avoid a minus 7. So we might just keep making tokens. But at least now the Gala Greeters are applying a good bit of pressure. So one Void Wing attacks, other stays on defense. And Curiosity, so they can draw two for one mana. And a back of Nyssa. So if I minus seven, that should be good enough here. All creatures get plus three plus three. Still have a Nyssa left over. Augury to proliferate and draw. So even if they find removal for greeters, they would still take a lethal. And we get to trample over. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Some early elves setting up Awaken the Woods. And then Nissa as our finisher, facing a poison deck. Okay, finding a loam speaker is nice. So next turn loam speaker, and then maybe turn after awaken the woods for X equals two. Probably don't want to trade when our opponent gets a replacement. And another crawling chorus. And a Skrelv. Skrelv is definitely a problem since we only have green creatures so they can attack past it. Go with the Loam Speaker and now with the second Greeters I could be convinced to just play double Gala Greeters next turn. And wait on Awaken the Woods. On the bright side our opponent's also not packing too much removal. 
So if we can curve awaken the woods into Nissa, that's likely to be good enough. But now we are taking two poison per turn between Skrelv and Chorus. Can block here. And if they have a pump spell, it's not the end of the world. I Ganjo, fair enough. Can still double greeters thanks to the stalwart. And then we'll make treasure. And next turn we could even awaken the woods for X equals 4. Take 3 poison. And make sure to prioritize playing forests here. And then we'll max out our Gala Greeters here, choosing all three modes. Okay, so just need to survive one more turn. And then we should be able to play a lethal Nissa. So two more poison coming in. Chorus hangs back. Duelist is fine, would have been a lot scarier earlier in the game. Play Forest over Buseju, and then we'll use our treasures here to cast Nissa for 7 mana. We control 5 plus 4 equals 9 forests. And smash. And that should do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn one, probably Cultivator over Stalwart. Start taking that up. And then now Stalwart. Pass it back. Can play Nissa, play land afterwards. Still maybe play a two or three drop. Opponent on an equipment deck with a halberd. Nissa Ascended Animist is excellent too. So probably no need to make use of Nissa's landfall here. Just play our three drop and pass. So I can add an extra counter to the cultivator. And then Awaken the Woods sets up our planeswalker very nicely. The War Whip 2-2 two, two, Double Strike makes it easier to move around equipment. And then play a land, enable landfall. Use Stalwarts. Use Cultivator. And then double tap Q to float all our remaining mana. X equals 5 which will enable landfall five times and find another elf, which we'll be able to cast here. So Cultivator is going to be next, unless we want to play our Ascended Animists, although then I wouldn't be able to necessarily ultimate next turn to win the game. Don't expect any sweepers out of the equipment deck. Another War Whip is fine. And they've got uh, 5 damage removal here, Rebel Salvo finishing off Nissa thanks to the discount from equipment. But that's fine, since we have Ascended Animist, which should be more than enough here. Let me use Cultivator. And then can tap 1 token. 7 mana. Got 10 forests in play. So plus 10, plus 10, overrun. And smash. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a Loam Speaker into an invasion of Zendikar on 3, hopefully. Up against a blue deck. Could use any of our Nissans here as a. Uh, Ways to generate a bit of value. A loam speaker may get countered. Resolves for now. Fairy Vandal. 
can pick up plus one counters if our opponent draws a second card. Hits us for one. And we'll play Invasion and hope it resolves. It does. So two more lanes. Makes it easy to cast a large Awaken the Woods. Question is whether we want to play Gala Greeters first. But the two extra tokens might still be better. I guess Greeters would also gain some life, which could be important if our opponent starts pressuring us. And another Greeters. Alright, now I'm in favor of just playing two Greeters. And then we can activate the Loam Speaker to try and transform Invasion of Zendikar, which would also trigger Greeters once again, once our 4-4 enters the battlefield. Opponent's got a response. Maybe an Essence Capture putting a counter on Vandal. Opponent could also counter our Awakened Skyclave if we go and cast it. Okay, Greeters resolves. Try another one. And now we see the Essence Capture, which is why they were hovering over their Fairy Vandals. And then luckily don't need to worry about targeting the land we just played, and it's still having Summoning Sickness since Loam Speaker gives haste. That's something uh, they've changed over the years. Greeters makes treasure. And cast an Awaken the Woods next turn for hopefully the max amount. Take three. Ooh, Nissa. Okay, so Nissa right now would already be very effective. But uh, I think we maybe bait out a counter spell with Awaken the Woods. I can attack with a Skyclave first. And the Greeters. Well, the Greeters could get ambushed by another Fairy Vandal. So maybe just send Skyclave. And then we've got 7, 8, 9 mana, 10 with a Skyclave. So X equals 8. This can also just win us the game by itself. So it is a must counter. Could have left 2 mana untapped for a potential make disappear. It's going to be a Fairy Mastermind. And a Negates, so that would have countered Nissa as well. Okay. So our opponent's got 5 power in the air. Hopefully no more counter spells, so we can put Nissa to work. Play Cultivator. Can trigger Greeters, gain life now. That resolves. Okay, opponent just drawing with a Mastermind. That's not going to be good enough. Got eight for us on the battlefield. So that should be plenty here, even with only three creatures. Possible they still have a one mana bound spell available. But even that should not save them. And smash. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a nice hand. Turn 1 Stalwart, turn 2 could go with Visionary, and then Greeters can draw if we uh, cast it afterwards. Opponent on a black Toxic deck. And yeah, I think we'll go for Visionary. Coldweller number two. No attacks. Okay, so we have a few options. Could go with Nissa, although I wouldn't be able to pay the one from Visionary, but then I can play a land and maybe play another Visionary. Could also play another Visionary, pay the one, draw, play a land, and then the Greeters can draw two next turn. 
Getting Nissa down might be best here just to develop our mana. And play another Visionary. So next turn this Greeters can draw us two cards. A Rot Priest, okay. And a third Skull Dweller. Opponent still not attacking, which is a bit surprising. But I'm not going to complain. So, use a Visionary here, play Greeters, and we'll start by drawing one, can see what we draw. Draw another one. No land, unfortunately, so we'll just have to pass it back. Just want to hit our land drops and eventually slam down a Nissa to trample our team, so Death Touch doesn't matter too much. Opponent takes out Greeters, since they couldn't take out our 5-5 Nyssa. And now the Skull Dwellers start attacking. Yeah, I'll take three. So we'll play a Loam Speaker, and then I can pay two once again. Hopefully picking up a land to enable landfall on Nyssa. There we go. So do I still want to draw? Yeah, I guess that's fine. Make a mana. And play a Loam Speaker without drawing just to make more mana. And then next turn, land into Nissa could just be game. And we'll send in our 5-5. Five five. Not gonna risk Attacking with Visionary in case they have a pump spell for the Rot Priest. Aha, opponent's got a Necrogen Rot Priest now. Passes it back. Glad they didn't force us to trade here. Make more mana, and then 5, 6, 7. Only have five forests, but should still be plenty. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. On the draw with a keepable hand. A loam speaker maybe setting up Awaken for X equals two. Opponent on a legendary deck. And no early play. There's also an alternate line where we could have played Visionary first and then Loam Speaker draw a card. Although now Nissa play land, play Visionary. Sounds good. Although Glissa's gonna get to connect and draw a card. Now with Awaken the Woods we can enable both abilities on Nissa next turn. Okay, Ingana Sika giving Glissa Vigilance. And no attack. That's surprising. Okay, play a land. Enable landfall. And then Awaken the Woods first for X equals 4. Make 4 more mana, and then I'll still be able to play a Loam Speaker and draw a card with Visionary. And then given that we have a Nissa in hand, might as well play Cultivator, since next turn we're setting up lethal. No attacks. And our opponent's gonna need something pretty special here. Partners, good card, but not good enough. Now the Death Touch on Glissa will be able to take out one of our creatures, so probably don't want to attack with a Visionary, because otherwise we lose the plus one bonus for regular damage. Bodyguard's fine, so now we don't need to worry about the Death Touch. Yeah, it feels like our opponent could have gotten a bit more value out of their cards, but don't know if it would have been enough to necessarily save them here. Play Nissa. Huh? 
And that's a turn 5 kill. With quite a bit of damage to spare. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is keepable. Stalwart into greeters. And then hopefully pick up an extra land. Put in blue green. Do we see a turn one rock priest here? We do. So poison deck. At least we're on track to curve out nicely here with Awaken the Woods after playing Nyssa. Research on the Rock Priest. Does not give it extra power and toughness at least. Although this attack implies that they might have a pump spell. So I should probably take it as opposed to maybe losing both of my creatures. Even though I don't like taking extra poison and letting the opponent draw. And a shore up is what they had. Okay. So we have options. Could go with Nyssa. Play land, play Visionary. Could just play an invasion of Zendikar as well. I think Nyssa plus Visionary to give us the most board presence makes sense. And then I'm not too worried about missing out on potential card draw from Visionary. Make a treasure. And mana. And now we can get a plus one counter since a life gain doesn't matter against a poison deck. So now we've got a 4 4 that can get in the way. Never mind, bypass. Means Rock Priest can keep attacking and drawing cards. So that's pretty scary. And another shore up. I guess our opponent's not worried about us having removal, which is fair. Now if we didn't just win the game, if we top deck the Nissa Planeswalker, we could also potentially destroy enchantments like the Bypass. So now we can Awaken the Woods, have to decide how much mana to sink into it. But probably the max amount. So X equals 5. And then we can still Invasion of Zendikar afterwards. We get to find another elf. And Greeters is maxed out. And another Visionary was a nice one. So start by playing Invasion. Get two more lands, two more mana. And then I'll still have the mana to play Visionary and draw. Okay. Get in for 10. Could also transform the Invasion. Which I don't think makes a huge difference, but sure. It does enable Nyssa here, but the mana is generated end of combat phase, so won't really get a chance to use the mana in my second main phase, for what it's worth. Alright, 6 poison, can our opponent deal 4 more? Shredder, that's fine. So it doesn't look like they have lethal. Although now research, up to 7, 8 with an attack. So maybe if they have the blue march, they could still get there. And they get to see a lot of cards. Are we dead? Looks like it. Yep. Nope, just another combat research, up to 9 poison. So we get to untap. And then I'm pretty sure we have lethal here, although we could still play invasion, maybe find another elf and keep drawing with our lords. Sweet, on to the next one. We are on the draw with a keepable hand. Cultivator, double gala greeters to make treasure, set up an awaken the woods, and hopefully find one of our other payoffs. There's 12 cards I'm happy to draw here. Our lord and the eight nissas. 
Going into black white, maybe Phyrexian Sacrifice deck. So they could be packing some removal. Opportunist is a good one. And we'll likely take two. Nope, opponent hangs back. Okay, play Greeters and another Cultivator to enable them both. So we have all the mana we need, just need a bit of card draw or finisher. And uh, I guess in this matchup, maybe prefer the life gain for now. Another opportunist, so if there's ever a creature dying here, opponent's gonna run away with the game. And now they attack, nope. So we can untap our forest and then awaken for five. Opponent might have the Convoke removal spell in hand, but nope. At least no removal on Greeters. Okay, awaiting for an exciting top deck. Opponent plays an Officer. And another one. It didn't strike me like a soldier's deck. So not sure what else to expect here. Just a land. Okay, so we're not doing a whole lot since we don't have any profitable attacks. If I find a cheaper elf, I should probably keep it in hand in case we draw visionary later. That way I can actually draw with it. A bereaved survivor. So your opponent may be playing some starter deck here after noticing the barons. So it's going to be pretty embarrassing if we don't win this game. Alright, Nissa. So can play Nissa, although it's not like we're really getting to find another elf with it, but does trigger greeters. Probably have all the mana we need at this stage, so we'll go for plus one counters. And I'll play a land out since we have another one. But I do want to keep one land in hand, that way with Nissa we can essentially make plus one mana for a turn. And now if we draw our Invasion of Zendikar, at least Nissa gets to find another elf. Another Awakened Woods would be good too. Alright, there we go, Visionary. Although don't have an elf to go with it and draw right away. So I might want to save it for a turn until we do. Pumping the elves doesn't necessarily set up an amazing attack. Could of course just uh, hope to trade for the Pilgrim at some point so we can keep attacking, but that's a slippery slope with double opportunist on the battlefield. So we'll just pass it back. Don't want to expose Visionary to removal, which is why I'm holding it here. Commando's fine, although opponent can sacrifice it to blow up my treasures. So there was an argument for sacrificing them both, so they didn't have anything to target with Commando, so they didn't get to draw with a double opportunist. Keep charging up our cultivators. And another elf. So now we can play Visionary, play Stalwart, and at least get a bit of value. Although instant speed removal could have still killed Visionary because of the Gala Greeter's triggers. Find another Nissa. Which I think I'm happy to play, although it does mean triggering the Opportunist. 
So that's a little awkward. All right, so maybe we'll just pass. Possible I'm playing too passive here and I should have just been attacking. Interesting that they take out greeters instead of uh, the visionary, but now opportunist draws. And another survivor. Another elf gets to draw. And an invasion of Zendikar will trigger Nissa. So we find another elf, which draws with visionary. Hopefully string together multiple visionaries. Another Nissa instead. Alright, maybe it's fine to let the opponent draw so we can draw another card with Nissa. Could attack first, I suppose. Just to try and trade it off, although that does mean transforming the survivors as well. And we'll just send Nissa. Opponent trades. And the Loran's escape, fair enough. Still got a little bit of value out of it. Opponent draws two. But they were going to get to draw anyways here from our elf replacing the legendary. Okay, pass it back. And now they cut down the visionary. They've identified the real threat. Opponent draws two. Yeah, we need to find our Planeswalker here, since otherwise our opponent's going to keep drawing with the Opportunist. These counters on Cultivator probably don't matter anymore. And there we go. All right. That should do it. 10 forests on the battlefield, plus 5 dryads, so 15. But this kind of highlights one of the weaknesses of this elf strategy. It does rely pretty heavily on the Ascended Animus to end the game. Sometimes stringing together a couple uh, leaf crown visionaries can get it done. Greeters can get pretty large by itself. And of course now we have Nissa to generate a lot of value as well. But when it comes to actually closing out games, there's no better card than our Planeswalker. Opportunist draws, but uh, pretty sure we still have them here. So we did not play the most competitive games of Magic, admittedly, but this deck was also designed with a play queue in mind, as it's perfect for completing your quests of casting green spells, games are over pretty quickly, and the deck's also a ton of fun to play, ramping into all sorts of elves and then smashing the opponent to death with Nyssa. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.